I give salam to my people in Bangladesh. Salam to the people of Marrakesh. We're here with our friend Moses, yeah, and Moses is a young man who is looking for the truth, correct Moses? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Now Moses, when we have any discussion or any conversation, I will not say this, I will say conversation, we need to have kind of objectives, correct? Correct. So if one of the objectives, let's agree on this. If we found the truth, we have to accept the truth and follow the truth, right? Yeah, correct. So if the truth was with Islam, you and me, we have to accept Islam and to follow Islam. Correct? Correct. You agree? Correct. So this, these, are the, these are the main things. So now, if we have a discussion, and if you find Islam makes sense to you, you will be Muslim. Yeah, correct. All right? Yeah, correct. Fine? You yeah. agree with this? I agree. 100%. All right. Okay. So I was asking at GC yesterday. I understand that you came kind of um, from a Christian background. Yeah? and maybe you study bits and pieces here and there about Christianity. And one of the things, does Christianity make sense to you? I mean, to be honest, it doesn't. It doesn't? No. Why? Because I, I've done a lot of research about Christianity and I've noticed that throughout, like, when the, when the Bible has been released yeah. until now, it has been corrupted and it's been forged, like, some exactly. of the, the, the scriptures inside the Bible. Exactly. It's very controversial. Like, exactly. So, like, it's kind of confusing to me and it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense to me. So, for example, the concept of God, almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, suddenly become weak. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Does it make sense to you? Yeah, it does. So God Almighty become weak. Can God do that? I mean, Can God become weak? In, in, well, I mean, in a sense, you can, you can argue that he becomes weak in Christianity. Yeah, I know. That's why what, what I'm saying, because God always described himself to be almighty, all-powerful, almighty, all-powerful, and all-knowing. Suddenly, God cannot seize his own characteristics, his own glory. God cannot, you know, seize that. So God is always all-powerful, will be always all-powerful. God is always almighty and will be always almighty. God is always all-knowing and will be always all-knowing, correct? Meaning, meaning, inshallah, yeah. So meaning, God is always that, like that. So God cannot, not God, it doesn't befit his majesty to seize these characteristics, yeah? For example, Jesus was weak. For example, when Jesus was on the cross, was asking for help, I said, oh, oh Father, for why have you forsaken me? So was weak. So God cannot be weak. Jesus was asked about the hour. He said, no one knows about the hour except the Father. Neither the Son nor, nor the angels. No one knows about the hour except the Father. That just shows he was ignorant about certain things. When at a time where he needed to defend himself, when people wanted to ask him this question, that if he is God, he said, I, did, I don't know about the hour. And the only one who knows about the hour is the God himself, the Barak So now, so that shows, and as well the corruption which is in the Bible here and there, that shows as well there are many things being distorted, being, being, uh, being described to Jesus, but Jesus didn't say such thing. What Jesus, he was saying, thank you, Please. brother. Yes, have, have one if you want. From the right, yes. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Come on, brother, take one. Take one, yeah. three, five, yeah. Thank you. So you see here, Moses, so God cannot, you know, it doesn't befit God to seize his characteristics, his glory as God, cannot cease to exist, cannot, you know, God is always there. So that's why going back to this, to the main concept, God is always all powerful, always all known, always has an independent will, Tabarak wa ta'ala, yeah? Now, we agreed to you in the beginning, if Islam makes sense to you, then you'll accept Islam is the truth. Yeah. And you'll accept, you accept to be a Muslim. Yeah, I would have no choice because yeah. if I receive undeniable evidence, yes, exactly. I'll have no choice but to. Yes, fine. I will bring you some undeniable ev evidence. And now I want you, with your own words, I want you to tell me about if this information could come from someone who lives 1400 years ago. For example, now what is the deepest point any person could dive 1400 years ago? Do you dive? <laughs> Do you swim? No, I don't swim right now. Okay, you observe people dive, yeah? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do you know what, what's the average someone could dive? Mm, not necessarily, I mean... Uh... I will answer you. Yeah? If you are 
you know, people with free diving, you know, just on normal humble equipment, whatever, 20 meters, 15, 20 meters maximum, they can't do more than this, yeah? yeah? Yeah. But recently people, they start diving more with equipment and things like this, they, with submarine and things, so they discovered in, inside the ocean. So it is impossible for someone 1400 years ago to give you information about what's happening deep in the ocean, correct? Yeah. Impossible. Yeah, because at that time... No one knows. No one knows. Exactly. So God has described this in the Quran. In this book, God has said, those who are away from the guidance of God, they are like someone who is deep in the bottom of the ocean. Above him there is a wave. Above the wave there is another wave. Above the sea there is a cloud. Even if he took his hand out of his pocket, even if he took his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. Darkness upon darkness. So God is describing certain type of darkness, pitch dark. Someone who is away from the God, they're living darkness. But what darkness? God could say this is pitch dark, no one knows. But God has described this darkness to be a specific darkness. This specific darkness, like someone deep in the ocean, and above him there is a wave. Above the wave there is another wave. So we have two layers of waves. And above the sea, the sea there is a cloud. And look at this. This is so profound. And there is many, by the way. I just wanted to give you some example. So when the sunlight comes to earth, 40% of the sunlight will be reflected back. And only 60% will go through if there is a cloudy weather. Yeah? If there is a cloud, 40% will, uh, will, be, will be reflected back. Now, when, the sun, when whatever remains of this sunlight reaches the surface of the ocean, and if, it's, if there's waves on the surface of the ocean, what does the wave do to the light? It breaks the light. Yeah, it breaks the light, that's fact. So when it breaks the light, only half of that, or barely half of that, will go through. Yeah? So this, people, they could observe the surface waves. Fine. But only recently, they discovered underneath the surface of the ocean, deep in the ocean, there is another wave goes in another direction. So if the surface waves goes in this direction, there is another type of waves go, goes in another di direction. They call sea currents. Have you heard about that? Yeah. They discovered it recently. And the sea current, they travels in what? In another direction. In, in what? What's the, what's the process? In waves. In waves. Yeah? So they travel in waves. Yeah? So the sea current travels in waves in another direction. So when the sunlight, whatever remains, after the clouds and after the surface of the sea, which is have waves, deep in the ocean, there is another wave goes in another direction, they call the sea current. It breaks whatever remains from that wave. And deep in the ocean, there is, it is the absence of light. Even if someone takes his hand out of his pocket, he will be unable to see it. That's why there are creatures deep in the ocean, they are blind. There is no need for the light. So the point is, who taught Muhammad about this fact? Has to be. Wow. I mean, has to be. I mean, because obviously, yeah, it has to be good, right? It has to be. Has to be. There is no way. And bear in mind that Muhammad was illiterate person, and people testify for him that he's a truthful person. Even people who didn't accept Islam, they testify he's a truthful person. He's honest person, and he never worshipped other than Allah. And he was always. And then he went to one day and start pondering, and then God has revealed to him these revelations. And this is not, not ambiguous, you know, hypothesis. Those are facts which is discovered recently. Okay, let's maybe, they said maybe they're going to try. Let's see another example. When you, when you are sitting in the night, in a, clear, in a clear sky, when you see the stars, do you see the stars? Um, when I'm sitting down. And you look into the sky and you see all oh, those beautiful stars. Um, if it's night time, I'll probably see a few. Like I saw those stars, yeah? You see stars? Yeah. You see the start now? Not now. So, I see any stars now. So, would, when you see the start at the current time or the time when you are looking at it, or what do you see exactly? Well, right now... Um, no, I'm not talking about this moment, I'm talking about in the night. I kind of lost you a bit. Kind of Alright, I will answer you. I will. You know, you literally, when you look into the sky and you see the stars in the night, mm -hmm. you are seeing history, correct? Yeah. Do you know why? Because, um, is it because um, 
see light, like, isn't it? Because like, because those stars, they are billions of billions. Years, yeah, yeah. years away from yeah, us. Yeah, so the, so the when light. the when the light departs from those stars, yeah, yeah, yeah. it takes them millions of light years. Do you know what means yeah, light yeah, years? Yeah, yeah, meaning, yeah, yeah. Yeah. meaning when the light travels in the space in a year, those millions of them, until it reaches your eye. So what happened to those stars at this moment? I mean, they just. Um, it's just there, like, you just look at it. Those like, stars, at this, at their history, meaning the cosmologists, they say, yeah. this moment, at this, at, this, at this point, those stars, they are not even there. Yeah, it is not there. Yeah, it's either they turn to black hole, or they move from that place because they, they agreed that this universe is expanding. And God has mentioned this in the Quran. God has said, we have created the heavens and we are expanding it. And not just that, and God has mentioned another verse in the Quran saying, uh, when God making an oath by something in the Quran, it means something to ponder, something to think. God said, I will not pay, make an oath by the positions of the stars. Positions. Look at, look at the term. By the positions of the stars. And it is a great oath. But you are not yet aware of that. So God is talking to those people 1400 years ago. You are not yet aware of this. What you see there, those are the positions of the stars. They're not the stars. Who taught Muhammad about this fact? It has to be, it has to be God, because, because at that time, like, no they way, no, they wouldn't know that. Like, there's no way, like, there's no modern scientific technology at that time to exactly. know that. Exactly, so, like, it has to be. exactly, exactly. That's my point. Not just that. Adding more to you. What about the development of the fetus in the womb of the mother? Do you think people will know? No, at that time. Okay, so God has mission in the Quran. When God has said created you from like like a blood clot or like a, like a, a, like a cells, which is like a leech hanged in the womb, then it developed to like a bite size, then it developed into bones, and then those bones covered with the flesh, and then it became to another creation. Who taught Muhammad about this? A little bit of man that did not, that could not read or write, like, has to be, has to be God. Has to be God. And moreover than this, even historical fact, even historical facts, since you came from Christian background, yeah. let me tell you some historical facts. Now, maybe if you read some of the Bible, you came across some of the things of the Bible, one of the things it says, the story of Moses, you know the story of Moses and Pharaoh? Yeah, yeah. Joseph and Pharaoh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Moses and Pharaoh, Joseph and Pharaoh, happy days, no problem. So you will find in the Quran, you'll find the story of Moses, like your name, and Pharaoh, you'll find it scattered around the Quran, Moses and Pharaoh and Pharaoh and Moses, no problem. But in the Quran, there is one single chapter, suddenly changed the tone from Pharaoh to a king. Just only one chapter. Yeah, yeah. Listen to that, and that's so profound. So this story it says about Joseph and the king of his time. So keep saying the same chapter, Joseph and the king and the king and Joseph and all of these things. But when it comes to Moses, always Pharaoh. When it comes to Joseph, it's king. So the Christian in the old times they used to say, "You Muslims, you got it wrong. As to be, oh, you don't call it Pharaoh. You are wrong." We said if it came from God, we have to accept this. Until an Englishman. Recently, 100 years ago or something or so, the late 19th century, yeah, discovered what is called risotto stone. Have you heard about that? No. So basically, this risotto stone, they discovered an ancient stone, which is literally has the old hieroglyphic Egy Egyptian language, yeah, explained, explained into what? Into old Greek language and then into Latin language, yeah? Then they dismantled the information which is mentioned in the, you know, in the, in the old, in the old uh, Egyptian history. And then they came to, to a fact. They said it is impossible, you understand, impossible for the king at the time of Joseph to be called Pharaoh. Because at that time, Hyksos used to rule Egypt and Hyksos like, like from Mediterranean leaders who took over Egypt. And then they never use the title Pharaoh. They use kings, they used to be kings. Later on, when the ancient Egyptian took over from them, 
and then they introduced the title pharaoh into kingship. So the point is, who taught Muhammad about this fact? My brother Moses. Has to be good. So, going back to the promise that we have said in the beginning. If the truth comes to you, and if it makes sense to you, you will accept it, correct? Correct? Those are your words. Yeah? Now, do you want to accept Islam? According to your promise and according to your words. So, I mean, because like, since I was young, I've been brought up into that, my upbringing has all been Christianity and like, I understand. my parents are Christian and that. I used to go to church every day. I, I mean, I, I even went to church today. But the truth is the truth, correct? Yeah? Now, do you want to accept Islam? Yeah. Okay, good. So in Islam, we don't have a pool to dump, you know, to jump in. There is nothing, in Islam, nothing. In All what you need to do as a Muslim, to become a Muslim, is to say the words of testimony. To say, I testify, none word of worship except Allah. Allah in Arabic means the one God. And to testify that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And to testify that Jesus, peace be upon him, that he is a messenger of Allah. As simple as that. Do you want to do that? Okay, so repeat after me, yeah, we'll say it in English and then we'll say it in Arabic, all right? Okay, Moses, yeah? Yeah. I testify, I testify that, that there is, there is none worthy of worship, none, for, none, none worthy of worship, worthy of worship, except, except Allah, Allah, and I testify, and I testify that Muhammad, that Muhammad is the messenger, is the messenger of, Allah. of Allah. And I testify, and I testify that, Jesus that Jesus is the messenger, is the messenger of Allah. Of Allah. We'll say it in Arabic. Ashhadu, Ashhadu, an la, Allah, ilaha, ilaha, illa, illa, Allah, Allah, wa, wa, Ashhadu, Ashhadu, anna. Muhammadan, Muhammadan Rasulu, Rasulu Allah, Allah wa, wa Ashhadu Ashhadu Anna Isa Rasulu Rasulu Allah Allah Takdeer Allah Akbar Takdeer Allah Akbar Takdeer See this beautiful feeling? Yeah. Yes, actually, I know. That is the feeling. It's a burden that's been lifted from you. That's all. That's a beautiful feeling. That's how we feel. You see? Yeah. Give a, give a hug to your brother. <laughs> His name is Moses. Brother Musa. You mean Musa? Musa. So, Barakah so we have a new Muslim uh, program with Sheikh Yunus as well, Inshallah. which is we teach how to pray. Like so, if you want to learn how to pray, you can book a session with us. Inshallah, we will send you a guided prayer mat, and Sheikh Mohammed or myself will teach you how to pray step by step. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. So we'll uh, take your number now. Yeah. Go to also. Let me give you the website name. Yeah. You can book it from there. It's called salahplus.com. Yeah. Yeah. Inshallah. Okay. And take number. Of the I will send him. Inshallah. The website. Yeah, send it. Inshallah. Book it. Inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. And yeah. yeah we'll take right. my inshallah. number. Inshallah. Inshallah. All right. Uh, and then. Yeah, and let me put my number for you. I don't have any data, so I'll just save that. Yeah, that's my number.